This video is about multiplying mixed numbers and goes with CPM chapter 5, section 1.4. Before we get too far, there's some important vocabulary terms that you want to make sure that you're familiar with. You should already know these, but let's go over them again quickly just in case. Remember, an estimate is when you are looking for an approximate solution to a problem. It is not super precise, but it gives you an idea if you're in the right ballpark for your solution. Okay, Fraction greater than 1 is a term that is used frequently throughout CPM. It is the same idea as an improper fraction. So that would be something like 5 thirds, where you know if you simplify it, it's going to be greater than 1. So just remember that's the same thing as an improper fraction, which you may have heard of before. And remember, a generic rectangle is, um, we use that interchangeably with the area model. And that's where we have our rectangle. And you could set up something like 12, where you have your 10 and 2, times 11, where you have your 10 and 1 like that. And then you would multiply each individual section. And I'm not going to ask you to do this too often, but it's another strategy for breaking down multiplication problems. So previously, our lessons have been looking at multiplying simple fractions. Today, we're moving into multiplying mixed numbers with that. So let's look at our first problem. Mr. Funk's favorite cookies call for two and one third cups of chocolate chips. If he makes two and a half batches, and each batch has two and one thirds of the cups of chocolate chips, how many cups of chocolate chips does he need? Estimate and solve. Now remember, there are a lot of different ways that you can estimate. As long as you can justify why yours is reasonable, I'm gonna go with it, okay? In this case, I would probably estimate and say that for, each batch, I need two and one third, so I'd probably say two or two and a half. And then if I have two and a half, I can keep it at two and a half batches, or I can move it up to three. And I would do two times two and a half as my estimate, which would give me five cups as my estimate. And we're just gonna leave that there off to the side until the end, and that's when we'll check and see if our solution's reasonable. Now there are multiple ways that you could solve this problem for a precise, exact solution, not estimating. And I'm gonna show you two strategies. The first is to use that generic rectangle that we talked about. And setting it up, I did a quick rectangle sketch for a generic rectangle or area model, and I labeled it two and one third, and then two and one half. And now I can multiply and fill in each section. Okay, once I fill in each section, I am able then to add each part, and with something like two thirds and one sixth, I'm going to want to make sure that I have a common denominator for those, which some of you can do in your head and some of you can't. So make sure you work that out as you add it all the way across. Okay, so I took my numbers from the generic rectangle, added them at the bottom, worked my way down with our upside down triangle, and then saw that it was five and five sixth cups, which is in the same ballpark as my estimate. Okay. Another way that we could look at it is converting this into an improper fraction or also known as a fraction greater than one. Pause the video and I want you to try that on your own and then I will show you on the right side here. Okay, I started by copying my problem two and one third times two and a half. Remember I'm multiplying it because I have two and one third for every batch. And then I turn that into an improper fraction or the fraction greater than one. So two and one third is the same as seven thirds, and two and a half is the same as five halves, and then I'll just multiply across, which gives me 35 sixths, and then I will need to simplify. And I know that six goes into 35 five times, and then I have five sixths remaining, so I have five and five sixths left, which I can check both, and they are the same amount, and it is still in the ballpark, okay? Try one more on your own. Allie runs along a track that is two and four-fifths of a mile long. If she ran the track five and a half times, how far did she run? Now, it doesn't say to estimate in this, but it's always a good idea to do that first just to make sure that you're gonna have a solution in the right ballpark. Okay, go ahead, pause the video, solve it, and then I'll show you how I did it. When I solved it, I did my estimate first, and I took two and four-fifths and rounded that to three miles and I took five and a half times around the track and rounded that to six. 
So I then took it and did three times six, which gives me an estimate of 18 miles. Then I worked to solve it. I copied the problem, two and four fifths times five and a half. I turned it into an improper fraction of 14 fifths times 11 halves. And I wasn't sure what 14 times 11 was off the top of my head, so I showed my work on the side. And I got 154, which is my numerator, and five times two I know, which is 10. And then I'm going to need to simplify. When I simplified, I got 15 and 4 tenths, and I was able to simplify 4 tenths down a little bit more to 15 and 2 fifths of a mile. And you can see that as I'm working, I organize my work a little bit differently than you might. Okay, I start with my upside down triangle here, but I also use arrows so that I can show where my next step is going to be. That's a strategy that I use that helps me organize what I'm doing. It may or may not help you. It's something that you're welcome to try if you'd like.